Backstage, hey. Dan, you met her at a workshop, huh? Right. You know, landscape workshop. Who was there? Do you remember who was on the panel? Oh, they were all. Stephen Schwartz was the. Um, I think Stephen Sondheim came too. And who else? Um, David Bell. I can't even think of. But a lot of, a lot of big people from the theater. Uh huh? Yeah, they're doing it again this year, huh? They do it every year. They're gonna do one with the theater class too. And she can, she's taught English as a secondary language. No. All right. Sit up. Welcome. <laughs> I am Sean Hartley, and I'm the director of the theater right here. And I want to thank you very much for coming, and thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we got a few more people than we thought, and um, I'm just glad you're all here. Uh, you may not know where you are, so I just want to take one second to explain that you are in the Abraham Goodman House, which is the building for the Elaine Kaufman Cultural Center. And the Elaine Kaufman Cultural Center has the world-renowned Merkin Hall downstairs, and next time we do an Ann Bard play, we will be in Merkin Hall. <laughs> However, tonight the Ann Goodman Recital Hall. And another very important part of this center is the Lucy Moses School for the Arts, uh, which is where this play really began, in Richard Simpson's Musical Theater Writers Workshop. And uh, just to tell you a little bit how it worked, Ann Bard wrote a play which she brought into this workshop of writers, and uh, people liked it. So Richard Simpson brought it to me. Uh, that I might be interested in doing it, and Anne spoke to David, who was a composer in the workshop, and that's how it all came together. So if any other writers are in the room, I recommend this process highly. Um, we, this is a work in progress, and we're curious to know what you think of it, and we have uh, definite plans for a future for this. So we would like to hear your ideas. Um, after the performance in the next room, we're going to have a wine and cheese reception. <laughs> but before we get the wine and cheese reception, uh, we're going to see the wine and cheese reception. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, I hope you enjoy both the wine and cheese reception and the wine and cheese reception. <laughs> Sexual revolution. 
and somehow it never occurred to me. You were supposed to want to be free. I really thought all those guys were going to marry me. <laughs> He's 
crossing his legs and he's putting his hands on his knees. The speaker is saying there'll be three samples of scrawl at the wine and cheese. <laughs> now, the speaker is talking about the interrelationship between fishing and zen. <laughs> Everyone is transfixed, all these hundreds of women and these two or three men. <laughs>
is the straw dry. <laughs> Hi. Isn't this scrawd dry? <laughs> I'm Barry. What's your name? Oh, uh, Lois. Uh, are you from here? Uh, yes, I was born in a question about my family comes from Canada. You're kidding. I just moved here from Toronto a month ago. Oh. <laughs> Do they always serve you so much food after a lecture here? <coughs> no. This is for people's like social lines, sort of. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. This herring with tomato sauce is good. <laughs> um, so what part of Canada is your family from? Uh, Vancouver. Oh. I have a few uh, in Toronto. Oh, what part? Uh, I oh. don't know what that Lois, is. Lois, this is Sue. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you, I say. But by now I know never to skip a beat. I should have known he was married because he's so sweet. Oh. Sue is my sister. Oh. <laughs> I thought everybody could tell we look so much alike. You do, actually. You really do. Do you have a card or something? Oh. Here. Here. Here's mine. Oh. Great. Uh, how are you getting home? Can we give you a lift? Oh, yeah. I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> separated from my wife and well now we've decided to give it one more try but I enjoyed meeting you very much and talking about Harry with you <laughs> and I wish you the very best sincerely very short <laughs> what a nice guy it was so sweet that he wrote this letter maybe it's really true what my therapist said Things are getting better. <laughs> I actually attracted a guy who wasn't a sadist or a liar. <laughs> Ooh, a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Discover your roots. Come to Israel. <laughs> yeah. I'll get some nice outfits and I'll rent out this place and I'll go. After all, you never know. <laughs>
comes out in the desert sun. This tall, blonde guy comes over me. Hey, what's your name? <laughs>
Simon Says, Color War New Jersey style. <laughs> Laser karaoke. <laughs> Chanting. Radar mating. And encyclopedia personal ads with 15,000 entries. Live matchmakers from Poland. <laughs> Craft course. Interpretive trail walk and horse pitching. I've got to make the effort to try to go. Maybe there's a corner there I can sit and sew. No, no. I'll go back to the search for a synagogue. A place. A home. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I go, I stand and pray for hours. With 300 people, I might be able to meet. If I can figure out if this is the weekend they give you something to eat. <laughs> Last week, I listened to a rabbi talk of family ties and joy at the bar mitzvah of some unknown boy. <laughs> I stayed for hours thinking it was the service for the unaffiliated. <laughs> After it was over, they served the filter fish and I ate it. <laughs> I only realized it was not the service for the beginner when everybody started to stream into a large room for a sit-down dinner. Maybe it is easier to spend Saturday circling these ads for possible events rather than to actually go to them. <laughs> Which makes me even more tense. All right. I'll focus only on what I'm really interested in. Sewing, weaving, feeding, macrame, china painting, and this new course in rose modeling in this other bulletin. There are so many things that me and so many other women are interested in. <laughs> Here's an Israel Issues meeting on the magnificent Royal Caribbean. $1,000 fair fare. $3,000 for this Hamptons house share. $500 for a gala. Museum membership, you get to go to two wine and cheese receptions a year. <laughs>
swallowed these shoe dyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. So sometimes I envy people who also live monastic lifestyles like nuns and criminals. <laughs> they get to eat together and even talk. <laughs> I feel a vibration emanating from this catalog I'm holding for the Hexagonal Institute for Spiritual Unfolding. <laughs> oh, force or higher power, oh God, I know my relationship with you has been a little odd. <laughs> Thank you for my beloved friends and for my cousin in L.A. who once fixed me up with a guy she knows. <laughs> oh, I spent two thousand dollars on a trip to the <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the seven hours of love shared with Moja in the desert. Better to have loved and lost, everybody says. And for the twelve hours of intimate human contact I had with my old friend Al fifteen years ago. <laughs> These are the moments that sustain me. For how long, they'll never know. As I go on, forgive me. I know I should have had something witty to say to that guy on the Roosevelt Island tram. But our eyes only met for a split second when we heard that thing jam. And God, as I go on shopping and walking the street, thank you for those nice wee coffee shops where the waiters and the owners are so sweet. And for the two minutes of really deep conversation I had with another human being on the bus. Before he had to get off at his stop, I felt so alive and understood I didn't even want to shop. <laughs> and God, thank you for making me lucky enough not to have a life-threatening disease. <laughs> for the gift of life, even wine and cheese. <laughs> Someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, Jane. He's a bit eccentric. And he's a little older, I think. 60, but hey, you never know. <laughs> Jane, th th this is so nice of you. Well, I would have done it before if I had known anybody. Oh, but this is an omen. Oh, Jane, if nothing else, it'll be a nice evening out. His name is Stuart Crane. I'll give him your number, and you guys take it from there. He's oh. a poet, too. Quite a well known one. Anyhow, let me know how it turns out. Bye bye. Oh, this is so great. Hmm? Yippee! He's a friend of my best friends, a poet. Now I can, I can, I can do all my gourmet recipes like the one with sun-dried tomatoes and sauerkraut. And I can take all his fire and throw out. Ha, <laughs> 
Oh, I've fallen off lots of chairs, too. <laughs> I like him. He's so compassionate and filled with life. And it sounds like he wouldn't even mind having a dizzy wife. <laughs> I was married eight years. We were running this poultry farm hotel. <laughs> I guess I wasn't much help. I didn't know how to do anything like feather plucking or paper carrying. But I'm sure you did other things. Well, apparently not. My ex-wife ran off with the plumber. <laughs> and you were married, right? Any kids? Uh, no, but I have my students. I love them. But that's not the same. No. Um, Jane tells me you want to be a lyric writer. Have you published anything? Uh, no. You know what I say. Practice, practice. Practice. Art is pain. My poetry is pain. You can't imagine the torture I felt when I'd hear my ex-wife and the plumber laughing together over the sound of the toilet bowl. This cruel, subtle deception. My ex-wife had a tragic life. Abandoned by her mother and father at the age of five, she scraped the streets to stay alive. A proletarian hero getting up at 4 a.m. to feed thousands of chickens and clean a cruddy motel. <laughs> Alone and strong with a Lysol smell. Her brother was a homosexual. He burned himself up, just like that. Went up in a puff. But Alice, she was tough. She knew how to live and she knew how to suffer. Maybe what you need is a life that's just a little bit tougher. You did seem so nice at the start. <laughs> <laughs> this great big gentleman with his nice big heart. Alice was beautiful. She had this long jet black hair and she moved like a giant that could never be caught. This incredible dancer. She was completely self-taught. So, Lois, what do you do when you're not teaching or trying to write lyrics? What's a typical Saturday life? Like the light of the green, Lois. I do nothing, you asshole. <laughs>
This is the typical sandal. Right there. But then, when 
when I get to the actual seat, he looks sort of worried and he like turns his head away. And on the seat right next to him, he had put down his attaché. So the bus starts to move and jerk, and finally this looking and looking and looking and looking starts to get me annoyed. I had just had a nice weekend with my friend, which I enjoyed. So I decide to stop looking, lump myself down on any old seat, saying to myself, my life is complete. And just as I am about to put my bag, I'm getting out of the aisle, and I put my bag in the seat, and I'm like getting out of the, the aisle, this gorgeous guy gives me a smile. He actually smiled at me. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and even after a hundred years of therapy, I couldn't receive it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just that. You see, his seat was not directly opposite line right across the aisle. And I had to get, I had to take the seat I was about to get into before the smile. <laughs> My seat was in front of the guy on the opposite side. And the distance of about five feet between the two seats was too wide. So in order for me to get to say hello to this guy with a smile, I would have had to jiggle my entire body around right into the eye. <laughs> Suddenly, the scenery on the Long Island Expressway becomes absolutely thrilling to me. <laughs> I am riveted to cemeteries and small houses as my neck is killing me. My head is glued to the left. <laughs> He is to the right and up. I sit there staring straight ahead like everybody else on the bus, lacerating myself for not having any guts. But I have no reason to turn my whole body completely around. Maybe I'll make believe uh, I'm surrounded by an insect or or a sound, or, or or I'll drop my 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 earring on the floor, and then I could um. Um, um, put my head down into the aisle and twist my neck to the right and up. <laughs> Maybe I'll drop this paper cup, but then it would roll down the aisle. But <laughs> <laughs> I could run after it, you know, and I guess catch his eye on the way back. I think I'm letting a shine today. <laughs>
fishies got any scrot in there. Maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this green one. Do you like fish? I love it. <laughs> Do you like scrod? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you like unagi? <laughs> the next night we went to the Happy Crab. We had Tasmanian gefilte fish with mice. And now Gil, that's his name, is <laughs> And we're going out for some Staten Island seaweed. And I can't. I can't believe that if I hadn't been on that bus, I never would have met him. Now you got to figure out how you're going to get him. I get sea span. Oh, I finished the patio and now there's running water. Why don't you come up next week with me and my daughter? I don't. The first time I saw you on that bus, I had this feeling about us. I know I was right. Let's get married tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? It's <laughs> only been five weeks. Six from the time we first met on the bus. Okay, six. It's too soon. So what? How long does it take? I knew the second you started talking to me, you were so relaxed and friendly. <laughs> so? I said to myself, this is the woman for me. She's sweet and calm. Me? <laughs> Gil. Do you know how long it took me to... What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you were sitting there on that bus, like, turned the other way. I kept trying to think of a hundred things to say. I'm not good at these things. I've got that uptight New Yorker in me. I was so relieved when you started talking to me. By that time, I'd given up. I was tired and groggy, and I couldn't believe it when you said you loved Unagi. <laughs> I don't even know what Unagi is. I was just trying to make conversation. Don't you want to get married? I do. But this is so fast, and, and I don't know. And what if you change your mind in a year or so? I don't have to sample every fish in the sea. I'm a one-woman man, and you're for me. What if you're a cross-dresser or a murderer? You know this? <laughs> and in two weeks, you'll slit my throat and say, who's she I never heard of? <laughs> Lois, let's go to the happy crab and get some boiled eel. <laughs> I know, they have this great deal. Right, on sun-dried shark fin and sailor's moss. <laughs> I want a divorce. <laughs> you know, Lois, six weeks ago. I never knew you existed. It's fate. That was. We both could have missed it.
I was shy. All I knew was goodbye. Never knew loving you could be truly a miracle. Want to take good care of you. Bless the air you're walking through. Do you like your bacon with box? Have you had the chicken box? Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, 